Are you ready? Okay. Happy 
If you now please rise and join us in our call to worship. Rejoice, for the power of God has come. The same power the Promising to the poor the realm of heaven. Promising to the Promising to the weeping a life of happiness. Rejoice, O people of God, the transforming power of Christ is here. Let us pray. O Christ, whom even crucifixion could not separate from either the love or the power of God, bless us, the members of your body, with the guidance of your spirit, that we might seek God with your singleness of mind, See God with your clarity of understanding, and worship God with your purity of heart. Amen. Dear God, we ask you that you continue to bless these individuals whom we celebrate today. Dear God, as we go about our day, as we go about our week, we go through the struggles of life. We face many challenges. And dear God, we seek your presence. We seek your answers. And we seek you especially to be with us always. We pray, God, for those who are grieving. For those who are mourning, we pray for your peace and for your comfort. For those who are lost, we pray, God, that they may be found. Dear Lord, for those who feel they are unloved, 
May you help us as your church to give a smile, but to show kindness, whether they be our family or friends or whether they be a stranger. Help us, Lord, to share your good news of your kingdom that is to come. Help us, Lord, to be courageous, to be bold in sharing your love and sharing your good news, the message of the gospel of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to share it with everyone whom we encounter daily. Dear God, we continue to seek your leadership. May you continue to lead us and help us, Lord, to continue to follow. Dear God, we pray for your church, and we pray for the communities whom you have called us to be in ministry with. May you continue to empower us and encourage us. We pray, Lord, for all those who are sick, whether they're in the hospital, whether they be at home, we pray for your healing. We pray, God, for all of your people, and we pray especially for any conflicts in relationships. We pray, oh God, for resolutions and for peaceful resolutions between nations. We pray, God, for your local church and for your universal church. Help us to continue proclaiming your truth. For this we pray in your son's name, and as he taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do we have any children that would like to come up for children's time? You don't have to. Okay. It's good to see children in church today. Okay. I don't know if this is relevant anymore. I don't watch TV. Is The Price is Right still on TV? I'm showing my age. I know. Is there still a version of it on? Okay, well, we're going to play the Price is Right today. So, I have three price checks. $10, $3, and $40,000. Okay. All right. First, I know. Y'all remember how to play, right? you got to match the price with the item, and then you get a car, right? Okay. How much is a bag of Cheetos? Three dollars? Probably. Probably more than that now. Yeah. All right. Three dollars for Cheetos. A poem book. Ten dollars or forty thousand? Ten dollars. Okay. You're probably right. All right. Good job. 
Um, we should remember that the most important thing and the thing we should prioritize, the thing that was worth more than the $65,000 Chevrolet Silverado. It is worth more than silver or gold. More than silver or gold, it's, more, it's worth more than the most sparkly diamonds you could ever find anywhere. It's more important than the best vacation around the world you could ever go on. The biggest gift and the most important thing to us should be our love that Jesus gave us. And yesterday, um, when we were at the evangelism conference, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, gosh, God wants me to do all this. He wants me to share his word with everybody. And that's kind of scary sometimes, to share your testimony with people, to come up to a stranger and say, hey, can I pray for you? That's kind of scary, right? But after the conference at the very end, when I went up and I received my communion, the body and the blood of Christ, I just remembered how much God gave for me. He gave his son. Jesus gave his blood and his body for us. So the least we can do is whatever he asks us of us, right? Anything he asks, we can do it. So what is the most important? Our love that God has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please rise for the next hymn. I'd like to thank you, everybody out there, uh, for their giving, uh, you know, di giving by different methods through the past two COVID years. Because of the church being closed down, some of us having to just operate uh, from, uh, from online. Uh, and I want to remind you, you know, we have the offering box. Uh, you can mail in a check to our P.O. box, which is... Uh, it's 530? Yeah, 530. 530. Yeah, 530. And then there's the online pay option uh, in the uh, connection. Uh, I think it's run by PayPal, right? PayPal, right. Okay. Bow uh, your heads. Get it off the trigger. Holy God of light and life that overcomes darkness and death, as we offer our tithes and offerings to you this morning, we pray that we may give the confidence and assurance of those fully convinced in our promise of resurrection. Help us to experience our generosity as those who have no need to hold back or hedge our bets. May we live our days giving freely with love and grace, not as those who have the hope of salvation, but the promise in Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Simon and Andrew's boat. 
and Jesus told Simon to depart from the land. Then Jesus started to preach to the people. After he was done preaching to the people, he told, he told Simon to go to the deep and let down your nets for fish. And Simon said, Master, we've been fishing all night and we've got no fish, but I'll do it for you. Simon let down his net in the water and got a lot, lot of fish. And then he bent down his knee to Jesus and said, Lord, depart from me, I am a sinner. And, and Jesus said, don't be afraid, for now you will fish for men. Then they went back to the land and left everything behind and followed Jesus. Kids, Jesus wants us to obey to our parents so we can live longer on the earth. And he also wants to go to school, wants us to go to school, focus at school, and share the word of God with your friends. And don't do good things, don't do bad things, so we can go to the kingdom of heaven. Now I will sing you a song. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me. If you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. as told in Matthew, 
The version that we have today is the sermon on the plain, or the sermon on level ground. As we look around us today, being here in the fellowship hall, it kind of connects with us because everything here is on level ground. Preaching on the plain. Everything is kind of plain looking here in the fellowship hall. Now, if we were in the sanctuary, it might have gone better with the gospel as told in Matthew because I would be preaching from the pulpit kind of high up there as if you were on a mount. But the Luke version of this sermon connects with us because we are here. The beatitude is what is known uh, or what this message is normally uh, referred to. He healed everyone that came to see him that day because I want to remember that people came to not only hear him, but also to be healed by him. Whether they were sick with bodily illness or whether they were sick with some kind of evil spirit. So Jesus did the healing of not only the physical body, but also the spiritual body. And we're told in this text that everybody got healed. Not just some people got healed, but everyone that came to see Jesus that day were healed. And then Jesus looked up to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for there will be a day when you shall laugh again. Blessed are you who are hated. Blessed are you who are excluded. Blessed are you who are being criticized. Blessed are you who are being defamed. For the day will come when you too shall receive joy again. So rejoice in that day. For this, the people, what they're doing to you today, they also had done to their ancestors. And Jesus also said, But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. We listen to this sermon and we listen to this message from Jesus and it's just a, a wow message on so many different levels and especially here on this ground level, on this plain day, for here we are today. It is no doubt that every single person in here have heard this story preached on and told many times over. You would have either heard it from the Matthew version or you're here, you have heard it told from the version of Luke as we're hearing it today. But what does it mean for Jesus to have been on level ground? to be on the same ground level as the people. I can tell you that yesterday when we were at the Magnify Christ Evangelism Summit in Waco, when the bishop was preaching, sometimes he would get off the scene, the chancel area, and just come on forward to where the people are. There is a difference. There is a difference of connection with the people. I know that it is COVID and you know, I used to like to walk down the aisle in the sanctuary because there is a different engagement with the people when you're on the same level ground. You're able to connect, not only eye contact, but spiritually as well. 
And so there is a, when you distance yourself from people like if you were preaching from the mount, there is that disconnect. So for Jesus to have come on down the mount after he prayed and to be on level ground with the people, he was speaking to them person to person. He was connecting with them one on one because he wanted them to get his message, the message of Jesus, of bringing a good news to the poor, of bringing good news to those who are excluded, of bringing good news to those who are on the margins, was important enough for Jesus, for everybody to hear that Jesus was on level ground that he wanted everybody to hear it and to understand that he sees you and he understands what it is that you are going through. I look at us now and here we are still in the fellowship hall a year later and we're lamenting in many ways. We are weeping in so many ways because we are still in exile from our sanctuary. <laughs> How long, O oh Lord, must we suffer? How long, O oh Lord, must we weep? How long, O oh Lord, poor us, we're still here in our fellowship hall. And Jesus, this message of Jesus is trying to comfort us. Is trying to comfort us and saying, saying it to us, Hey, First Taylor, the day will come when you shall laugh again. The day shall come when you shall rejoice again. The day will come when you will be back there in your sanctuary. Rejoice, the day will come. And so the good news of Jesus were not only for the people of his day, but it is also for all of us who are here today. For whatever it is that we may be going through in life, because I know that we all go through seasons in life. We may be hungry today, but you never know what tomorrow may bring. We may be rejoicing today, but you do not know what the future may hold. So in many ways, I feel that Jesus is telling us, whatever it is that you are going through in life, Enjoy it to the fullest, but always remember that there are others all around you who may be going through a different season than you are today. So open your eyes to those around you who may be hungry. Open your eyes to those around you who may be weeping, who may be grieving a loss who may be crying because they feel unloved or excluded, because one day you may also find yourself there, in their place, in their situation. So it's not necessarily a woe as if Jesus is saying that being rich is necessarily all that bad because somebody got to pay for something <laughs> but what Jesus is saying is that we need to set our priorities straight that we need to get our life in order what are the most important things in our life and that should be love love for God and love for others. Isn't that the most important commandments that we have been given by Jesus? You see, the beatitude, as this sermon is called, is it means blessed. And what does it mean to be blessed? 
but to be joyful, but to be happy, but to be fulfilled. You see, there was this thought process in the culture of that day that people thought if you had wealth, if you had power, that if you were somebody important, then you must be blessed. Then you must be in God's favor. And if you were sick with some kind of illness, if you were filled with some kind of evil spirit, if you were poor, then surely you dis disappointed God in some way. And it's surprising that a couple thousand years later, many people still think that way. That if you're in good health and have wealth and you have power, then surely you must be blessed. Surely you must be favored by God. But if you're poor, if you're struggling with health, then certainly you have done something wrong. And Jesus preaching, Jesus' sermon here on the plain is saying the complete opposite. Because what is he saying? Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep, who mourn, because the day shall come when you shall laugh again. Yes, Jesus' message to the people that day was very radical because some people did not want to hear it. Because they were probably asking themselves, did I just hear Jesus correctly? Did I just hear him say that blessed are the poor? But I thought that if you're poor, then you're not in God's favor. But I thought if you do not have wealth, then you may not be in God's favor. And so Jesus preached a message that day that changed people's way of thinking. And today, church, Jesus is still bringing us the same message. And Jesus is wanting us to think differently. That just because somebody is not, does not have something to eat. Just because somebody is poor. Just because someone is not in power. Does not mean that God does not favor them. It's quite the opposite. It is quite the opposite because Jesus said, Blessed are they, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So I want us to think about the message of Jesus. Because you see, the beatitude is Jesus' message and we as disciples, we as Christians, are called to be like Christ. And to be like Christ, church, is to live out the beatitude. Is to live this message of Jesus, not just sometimes, but all the time. Not just when it's convenient for us. But every day of our life, Jesus is calling us to rethink our way of thinking and to align our minds with his and to think like him and to have compassion for others who may not have something to eat, for others who may not have a home. Because who was Christ? 
we need to be asking that question. Who was Jesus? I'll just wrap it up here today by sharing a story. And the story is that for the last uh, few weeks, I've been driving up to Austin uh, a couple times a day on Tuesdays. And so one, one of my uh, dogs has uh, Philo, is his name, and Philo has a tumor. So he has to go see a specialist at, um, in, in Austin. And you know, the specialist comes with a specialist price. <laughs> and uh, he has to get a radiation treatment uh, for the next six weeks. And so I drop him off in the morning and I pick him up uh, late in the afternoon. And it's not like an aggressive uh, radiation treatment, it's a, a palliative uh, radiation treatment. And so for comfort, it's not to prolong his life, but rather to provide a phylo with, with comfort. And so, and it's working, so uh, if you're wondering, it, it has uh, worked uh, for the last couple of weeks. I've noticed a huge difference. But each time as I drive in to Austin, whether to drop off Philo, it's right off of uh, Mopac in, in Anderson, uh, the vet is, and um, there are homeless people all over when I, uh, when I exit. And this last time that I went there uh, to pick up Philo this past Tuesday, uh, the, the line was, uh, the lane was all backed up. And I didn't know what it was. It could have been a wreck, you know, that's like an everyday thing in Austin. <laughs> but uh, no, apparently um, there were homeless people that had pitched a tent right there, uh, right off of the, the exit, and so the officers were there uh, trying to uh, apparently, you know, to negotiate where uh, they need to go. And, and every time I see that, and every time I've been seeing these uh, homeless people, uh, my heart just goes out to them. I, for one, just don't know what to do. How can I help uh, these people? These people who do not have a home who are just wanting to claim a space, a space that they can call their own, whether it's for a night, whether it's only for a couple of hours. These people without home who are probably hungry, if it rains, they're probably all wet, they all get weathered, whether it's hot or whether it's cold, freezing outside. And it just makes me think, and it's, it just overwhelms me to think that these people are around me every single day and I cannot do anything about it. And when I see these homeless people, and as a Christian, as followers of Jesus, I see Christ in them. I see Jesus in these homeless people. Because who was Christ but Christ who was homeless? Who was Christ but Christ who was excluded? Who was Christ but Christ who was crucified? Who was Christ but Christ who suffered? Who was Christ but Christ who was persecuted? And I still don't have the answer on what I need to do to help to do my part as a Christian. I may be one individual, but I am certain that I can do something for somebody, for one person, perhaps. I have a few more weeks to drive to Austin for a couple, uh, a couple times a day, so uh, if any of y'all want to take Philo, just let me know. It is on Tuesday mornings and Tuesday afternoon. Uh, but, you know, but there are homeless people here in Taylor as well. And I know that as Taylor continues to grow, there will be more people moving in to our communities. 
And I was just asking, church, that you continue to keep your eyes open, to keep your hearts open, to have compassion for these people who have less than you and me, who have less than what you and I have, that maybe somehow we can give to those who are in need. And with that, I want to remind you that we do have a Shepherd's Heart Day coming up in March. Is that correct? Fifth. Mm -hmm. March the 5th? I think so. First it's Saturday. coming up very soon. Yes, the first Saturday. Yes. So if you are able to help in that way, we are always collecting uh, non-perishable items here at the church and we take it over to Shepherd's Heart. And if you are able to give financially, Shepherd's Heart is always open and they are always willing to take donations if you are able to. But church, as, as you leave here today, I just want you to think on how you can live out the beatitude of Jesus, on how you can live out the gospel message of Jesus, of being the good news to somebody who needs to hear it from you this week. Amen. Amen. You may now rise for our closing <laughs>